Hello, I'm David Greenebaum, one of the reference librarians at Clayton State. Welcome to this introduction to incorporating critical thinking skills into your library research. This presentation was created by Thomas Jackson and me for the critical thinking class. In this video, we will discuss how critical thinking relates to information literacy, the skill set associated with library research. We will then take a look at what makes a research question effective or ineffective and follow up with five criteria to examine as part of a critical examination of information sources you might find. Michael Scriven and Richard Paul describe critical thinking as, quote, the intellectually disciplined process of actively and skillfully conceptualizing, applying, analyzing, synthesizing, and or evaluating information gathered from or generated by observation, experience, reflection, reasoning, or communication as a guide to belief and action. The American College of Research Libraries describes information literacy as, quote, the set of integrated abilities encompassing the reflective discovery of information, the understanding of how information is produced and valued, and the use of information in creating new knowledge and participating ethically in communities of learning. The skills and tools of critical thinking apply to information literacy in library research in that they inform and enrich the process of scholarly enquiry. The critical researcher will not simply accept what they read at face value, but examine it to discover underlying fallacies, assumptions, biases, and agendas. How can you apply critical thinking to library research? The first step is to use critical thinking to craft a relevant and effective research question so that you can be clear what it is you're looking for. An effective research question is one that can be answered with verifiable facts. The question is phrased in a way that avoids subjective responses and opinions. The question should address the real need or purpose of the research. The question presented here is specific. Its answer can be formed by searching electronic, library, and other information resources to find verifiable facts about how poverty affects middle school children. If no information is available, a study can be conducted to compare the academic performance of children from upper middle class parents with the academic performance of children from families who live below the poverty line. If the study is conducted properly using sound scientific investigative methods, the results should be useful information about how poverty affects performance in children. This question is not an effective one for a research project, by contrast. To begin with, the question is too broad to be useful in directing the research process. The life of Abraham Lincoln had many facets. The best answer to this question depends on the purpose of the information. If you are collecting information on Lincoln's role as an attorney, you would place an emphasis on his legal career. If you want to focus on his contributions as President of the United States, you would look at as his achievements as President. If the objective is to look at his life biographically, then your perspective would be different, and you would seek different kinds of information from a variety of different sources. Until the question is narrowed, you cannot search effectively for information or conduct research. You would also organize your information differently depending on which aspect of Lincoln's life you choose to place your focus. When critically evaluating sources you have found in your research enquiries, you will engage your critical faculties in order to read beyond the surface meaning of the text. You'll take a look at its underlying structure and logic and pick apart the author's arguments and rhetorical devices as you look for fallacies, inaccuracies, and errors in reasoning. As a schema to help in this analysis, you may want to keep in mind five specific aspects of the source that should be subject to examination. The source's accuracy, its authority, its objectivity, its currency, and its coverage. These criteria can be a gauge to the worth of many types of information sources, from books to websites to journal articles. 
Accuracy is a measure of how well the source's content represents the observable phenomena. To this end, you may want to compare the source with whatever outside information may be available, other research on the same subject, raw data, your own observations, and so forth. How well is the underlying information described? Can you verify the author's data and methods? If the author cites other sources, are they being correctly quoted or taken out of context? The authority criteria takes into account who is responsible for the creation of the work and what are their credentials or qualifications for writing authoritatively on the subject. Is the author identified and are their credentials given? Are the credentials appropriate to the subject under discussion? If the author has been active in the field for a while, the degree to which they are cited and referred to by other scholars is also a measure of their contribution to the scholarly conversation. When examining the objectivity of a source, you want to ask yourself what goal or agenda it might serve. Websites or articles that appear objective might in fact be cleverly disguised fronts for an advertised product. Even when this is not the case, however, it's important to understand that every author comes to an issue from a particular point of view often with an intention to convince or influence the reader to that point of view. Even science-based studies can serve an agenda. If a study is funded or sponsored by a drug manufacturer, for example, the sponsor may choose not to submit it for publication if the findings are unfavorable. You can also deduce a lot from the language the authors employ as to whether the work is trying to appeal to the reader's emotions rather than convincing the reader with facts and evidence. The question of currency addresses whether the information presented in the source remains as relevant now as when it was written. In some subjects, such as the sciences and engineering, new findings can render older scholarship obsolete. In the humanities, work tends to build upon prior scholarship in a way that doesn't invalidate the older work, although new outlooks and previously unconsidered perspectives may cast a different light on the scholarship of the past. With this in mind, look for when the source was created so that you can place it appropriately in its historical context and understand how a current interpretation might be different. And finally, coverage addresses whether the source is complete or only partially addressing the material. Does the work substantiate and build off its sources or take them out of context? To verify this, you might need to check it against those sources. Does it present clear arguments and adequate support? And also, is the work's target audience appropriate for the use you are putting it to? A source written for middle school students, for example, may be too simplified for an undergraduate research project. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this video or would like any assistance with any aspect of your library research, please don't hesitate to contact one of the Clayton State Librarians. We're available via phone and email, or you can visit the library website to set up a live chat or make a one-on-one -on -one research appointment.